Mary Baldwin and happy Apple Day. This is Melissa Woods, class of 1990. I wanted to share some tips and tricks from my kitchen to yours so that you can celebrate this Apple Day with friends and family. I'm the beverage manager and certified sommelier for Sailfish Point Country Club on beautiful Hutchinson Island in Stewart, Florida. And I come to you today from my home kitchen. We're going to be making a crock pot apple butter that's going to cook down and just be yummy over a few hours. It's going to fill your home with some beautiful fall fragrance. And then in a little bit, I'm going to show you some tips on some things that you can do for easy entertaining with that apple butter. There also will be a cocktail. Woohoo! So let's get started with our apple butter. So I have some Gala apples and some Granny Smith apples, about a two to one ratio. I've peeled these, I've cored them, and gave them a rough chop. And you just want to put all of this right into your crock pot. I have a little bit of vanilla extract. about a half a teaspoon of ground cloves, a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. Of course, you can do more or less to your taste and about a half, maybe three quarters of a teaspoon of some freshly chopped ginger. I kind of like that bite of ginger, but if you don't, feel free to adjust this to your taste. I also have some hard, it's not hard, um, apple cider. And this is about a cup. And you'll find that as this cooks, you might need to add a little more apple cider because you don't want it, you certainly don't want your apples to get dry. You want everything just to cook down and just be absolutely yummy. I'm just stirring that all around so our spices are all evenly distributed. The apples are evenly coated. And then I'm just going to put the lid on, turn it on low, and check it about every hour for the next three hours. So it's already starting to smell wonderful and it's gonna smell even more wonderful as it's cooking. Happy Apple Day, more to come. To continue our celebration, I wanted to come up with a cocktail that I thought would celebrate all the things that we love about Apple Day. And so I wanted to do a riff on a dark and stormy, one of my favorite cocktails, usually a little bit of dark rum, ginger beer, some lime, what's not to love? So for this, I went to Normandy. Normandy is that small region in France where they make Calvados. It's an apple brandy been made in this region for more than 500 years. If you go to your local liquor store, just look for the Calvados name and you'll see something. And so I've just got a tall glass of ice and it's about an ounce and a half of the Calvados brandy. And you wanna top that off with your favorite ginger beer. I like Fever Tree. You're gonna get some nice bubbles on this. I've already cut a lime into quarters. Give a nice healthy squeeze. Give it a little stir. You have your lime garnish. Cheers and enjoy. Mm. Now that's a way to celebrate Apple Day. Oh my God, that's good. Hello, Mary Baldwin, and welcome back. Our apples have been cooking in the crock pot for about three to four hours, depending on the wattage of your crock pot. For me, it was about three and a half hours, and I'm just about to take my immersion blender and blend it to a smooth consistency. The longer it cooks, the more brown it's going to get, and it has just filled the house with an amazing, amazing fragrance and I wish you were all here to enjoy it with me. All right, so be prepared for a very loud noise. very 
hot, so be careful. And you just want to incorporate all the bits around the edges. A little bit of the spice has, has bubbled up. Oh, that's just looking so yummy. And you can see how it's coating the back of my spatula. And as it cools, it's just going to continue to get thicker and thicker. Now, you could, of course, make some toast with butter and put your um, apple butter right on top of it just now. But I am going to make some cheese and apple butter straws that's going to go on a beautiful cheese board. And you're going to see those next few steps. So while my apple butter was finishing in the crock pot, I took a sheet of puff pastry out of the freezer and let it thaw for about 90 minutes on my countertop. And then when it was thawed enough to move, I put it in the refrigerator because I wanted it to be cold for this next step. So I have my apple butter that's been cooling a little bit in the crock pot that I have whirled, whirled with my hand blender so that it's all a consistency. I have one cup of shredded mild cheddar cheese. You could use sharp cheese, sharp cheddar. You could use Colby. It's really your choice, but I have about a cup of mild cheddar. I have a cookie sheet here that's lined with parchment paper for our cheese straws. Um, I have an egg with a, um, one teaspoon of water in it for my egg wash and you'll see how we'll seal that up. I have my pizza cutter and I have a little bit of sea salt that we're going to finish up with. So we want about not quite a half a cup of our apple butter and you may need a little more but you just want to put this on and then I have a pastry brush here and we're gonna spread this out so you're just painting your apple butter all over almost to the very edges. You want that to be nice and even. It is so fragrant and yummy. Oh my gosh. All right. Now that I have that in place, I'm going to take my cheese. And again, I want it to be all over. And you'll see that on my cutting board, I have already a piece of another piece of parchment paper. And you're going to see why, because you're actually going to use that and that's going to help you start rolling. So I'm going to take a little bit of my egg wash and just dab it around the edges because I want to make sure that we seal it when we start rolling it up. This is gonna be so yummy. All right. And then I'm going to use just the very edge of my parchment paper. And it's just like a jelly roll here. We're going to get it going. And keep using the parchment paper. Almost there. These are going to be amazing. I hope by now everybody has a cocktail in hand or an adult beverage. And I'm just going to turn these out. Straighten it 
it up a little bit. And then taking my pizza cutter right in the middle. And you want to look for about 12 of these. And I'm going to pull the first one out and just give it a little twist. And we've got our cheese, we've got our apple butter. And then I start with the other half. And again, I cut each big piece into half and then the remaining pieces into thirds so we can get 12 of our apple butter cheese straws and we just do a little twist in the middle for that extra bit of flair My oven is preheated to 400 degrees, and we are going to bake these at 400 degrees for about 20 to 25 minutes, depending on your oven. I'm gonna step away and wash my hands. All right, so I've washed my hands, and on my cutting board, I'm sorry, on my um, parchment lined cookie sheet. I have our 12 little apple butter cheese straws and I am going to just top them with a little egg wash. This is going to do two things while it bakes. One, it's going to ensure that we get a nice golden crust on each one of these and it's also going to give our sea salt that we're going to finish with a little bit of something to adhere. And you'll find that this is a very versatile recipe. You could certainly use different kinds of cheeses. You could, um, we have the apple butter here, but let's say that you have a little bit of leftover pesto or marinara or maybe you have a little bit of, of maybe some nice moths or some ricotta or you see where I'm going. You can endlessly riff on this. And then like I said, we're going to take this and let them bake in a 400 degree oven for about 20 to 25 minutes, depending on your oven. They're going to get golden and yummy. And then we're going to add them to a cheese board with some really yummy things and I can't wait for you to see the finished product. All right, see you soon. Welcome back, Mary Baldwin. We're about to pull our apple butter cheese straws out of the oven and assemble our beautiful cheese board. Let me check on our little friends. Oh my gosh, these look so beautiful. And in my oven, they were at 400 for about 22, 23 minutes. Your oven may take a little more, a little less, depending on how it is. We're going to let these cool right here, and I am going to start assembling my cheese board. So I have a few things here. And your cheese board is completely up to you. So you may have some of this, none of this, all of this. Um, I have a few apple slices that I put in a little bit of lemon water. So this was about a cup of water, about two tablespoons of fresh lemon juice, and it's going to keep all apple slices on our board from getting brown. Um, I have our apple butter that we made. I have a beautiful piece of triple creme brie cheese. 
You could use anything you want. Um, one of my favorite triple creams happens to be Cowgirl um, from Cowgirl Creamery, the Mount Tam. If you can find it, it's glorious. But I have some triple creme brie here. I have some smoked Gouda. And I'm just going to go ahead and cut a few pieces of the smoked Gouda so that when my guests arrive, there's already a few pieces ready to go. That way nobody feels intimidated that they're the first person cutting into the piece of cheese there on your board. I've already sliced a few pieces of manchego here. So um, really, really nice. And you wanna think about your cheese board and you wanna think about having maybe a cow, um, possibly a sheep or a goat cheese. It's completely up to you. So now that I have my main components here, I'm just going to move this over just a little bit to leave room for those yummy, yummy cheese straws. Then you want to start filling in the gaps. So I have some cranberry um, mixed nuts here. And you know, if you have somebody that is certainly allergic to nuts or nut aversion, you can certainly have that on a separate board. I have some dried figs. Again, you want some different flavors, some different contrasts. Because our puff pastry is gluten, I have some gluten-free crackers that I'm gonna tuck over here. I have some star fruit, um, carambola, um, I think they taste like rose petals. I think they add a nice, beautiful look to our cheese board. And then, of course, I have our apples that I've been soaking. You know, and I'll tuck some of these in. Make sure all of my little spaces are filled with lots of yummy goodness. And again, it's your cheese board. You can have it as much, as big, or as little as you want it. And then, oh my gosh. And then we're gonna tuck a few of our apple butter cheese straws right here on our board. We might be making some cocktails. We might have some white wine or sangria. Here we go. I have some of our apple butter ready for dipping or people could drizzle it right on their cheese. And let me tip this up a little bit. Voila, we have a beautiful cheese board that has some amazing cheeses, some nuts, some cranberries. It has some fresh apples. It has some apple butter and that we made, woohoo! And then it has our beautiful um, cheddar and apple butter cheese straws. This is so amazing. I'm just about ready to dive in and I wish you were here to join me. I wish everybody a happy and safe Apple Day and Bon Appetit. Enjoy.